We're back with another lesson. This time we're going to talk about some really low-key lighting and with control of selective focus. I've got set up the 1DS Mark III with the tilt shift 90 millimeter lens and adding the 1.4 teleconverter. It gives me a 135 tilt shift lens. So it gets me away from my subject a little bit. I'm shooting these keys of the typewriter and I'm using the depth of field that they're actually staggered and they go away from the camera then I want that to fall off with extreme uh, uh, quickness. I want it just to really fall off fast. So we're going to shoot at a very wide open aperture. Uh, our exposure here is going to be 125th at f2.8. At 2.8, I have very limited depth of field. Uh, the lens, when it's set to normal at this height, at this particular angle, the lens would be set at a slight angle down, which would increase my depth of field. So instead, but I don't want to increase it. What I want to do is actually reverse that. So we're going to tilt the lens away from the keys to actually increase the depth of field. We're going to switch over to the live video focus here for a second. And if we pull that open, we'll be able to see the normal shot. And it's a little overexposed because we're at the very, very wide, as far as the preview, because we're very wide open on here. Let me switch over to a tungsten setting so it looks like it's approximately the right color. And I'm going to focus the lens. And I can look on the screen right here. And as I focus the lens on that very front row, I can see that I am getting a nice little fall off of depth of field. But I want to increase that even more by, uh, by actually forcing the lens to re sort of revert from the angle that it's at. So I'm going to come to the lens. And I'm going to tilt the lens back or away from the keys. And as I do that, I can come back here now and refocus the lens on that front set of keys and I can really see a very, very fast, quick fall off as it moves. It's kind of a nice artsy look. Now, of course, we're going to do a very low key lighting. We're using these Aurora lights because they, they go down to a very, very low power setting. I can go, they're 300 watt seconds at full power, which sounds like a little, a little power, but that's all we really use with digital capture. In the days of shooting film, when we were in the studio shooting 8x10 and 4x5 cameras, we needed 3,000 watt power packs, and we were shooting at F64 to get that depth of field that we wanted. Today, we don't need that. It's actually way too much power. We can't control that much power. So having actually low powered lights is actually better for me because I can really get it down to 5 or 10 or 15 watt seconds with a repeatable, controllable fla flash over and over again. We have a softbox on top. Both lights are set to about 10 watts seconds. So I can say what I see is pretty much what I'm going to get. They're both at the same ratio. The one main light here, though, is much more powerful. It's got a spot grid on it. And we're, and we're just snooting that light directly raw right down into the, uh, the keys here. So now that I have that set up, I can see that I'm pretty good on the, on the focus. I'll turn off the uh, live video, go back to our regular shooting mode. And we'll take our first photograph. Like I said, we're at 100 ISO, 125th of a second. And we're ready to get a first shot. We'll give it a click. And the image takes about three seconds to come into the screen. And we'll get a preview right here. And that's pretty much right in the first shot, what we're looking for here. I could try some different points of focus. I may come down here and focus, see what it looked like if I focus to the third row and see if it actually fell out of focus more. We, as we focus through, this next shot, we should see more of the the front row being out of focus, the middle row being sharp, and then it getting farther and farther out of focus, which is a, another pretty interesting way to look at that. Uh, I might focus just to see the difference. I might focus way in the back row here and let it be a little bit more out of focus in the front, just for a comparison shot. And we have, I want to keep it dark in here, but I have just a little, enough light in there to, uh, to give me some shape. And I'm sure in camera raw, I'll be able to open that up a little bit right there. So that gives me a good shot here. I'm going to go ahead and move the camera to another position because I'm not really seeing any of the background. I like this shot that we did, but I like, I like the way the rust background is. I'm standing over it. I can see the rust down through there. So I'm going to lift the camera up a little bit higher and come in for a little bit more of a diagonal shot that might look down into the rust. So I'm going to re refocus the camera here. And I'm doing pretty much the same thing. I'm keeping the, I want to keep the depth of field very, very minimized. And there's a di couple different ways we can do that, depending on which way we tilt the lens. In this case, it's not really going too far out of focus. If it doesn't go quite far enough, I will then finish that using something like uh, On One Focal Point 2 plug-in, which will give me a very, very close to the same out of focus lens look. So um, that's something I can actually enhance. But I want to get the start of it right here. Let's go ahead and take a quick shot, see if we're getting anywhere. And see what we get here. 
I'm seeing the rust, and it is actually doing a pretty good job of getting me out of focus. I like, I like what I'm seeing here. I uh, might try just a little bit darker exposure. So let's, uh, I may take this down to five watt seconds here on the front light. So I'm going to just give it a quick click here. And instead of being 10 watt seconds, we've dropped it down about one third. And we'll take another shot, see how we like this any better. I want to make sure that I get good detail in my highlights. I want to be as bright as possible without being overexposed, because that's where I'm going to get the most dynamic range out of the photograph. That's looking rich. I'm thinking that's exactly what I'm looking for here. Uh, let's take another one just for backup. And I think I might just try focusing in a few different places. I may try focusing down in the front key right here and see if that even increases it more. Right in there. I'm liking. Yeah, I'm liking what I see. At least I gotta have, when you're doing selective focus, you've gotta make sure that something is sharp. You can't just say it's out of focus. You've gotta be able to pull some areas into sharpness because your eye needs to go somewhere in the visuals here. And I'm letting it be somewhat warm. We have a little bit of the video lights that we're taping with are kind of moving in here since we're at a wide aperture. That's filling in with a little bit more warm light. It's working to my advantage. So you work with the environment that you're in, and you shoot the pieces that you need. In this case, we can pretty much get this in one shot. We're going to take this back into Photoshop and finish it up, and we'll try maybe a couple of effects and see if we can get some really nice piece of art out of this.